Working with off-the-shelf parts is an essential skill in robotics, and knowing how to properly bring them into your CAD designs in Fusion will help save you countless hours and prevent major headaches down the line. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to import step files into Autodesk Fusion 360, the best practices to keep your assemblies clean, performing well, and where you can find high-quality step files for your robotics projects. This is going to make your design process smoother and allow you for more accurate builds, and ultimately help you build better robots. I'm Brogan Pratt, and with over 10 years as a robotics and design and technology educator, I've guided countless students and teams through these design challenges using these exact techniques. We'll start by looking at the import process itself, how to make that go faster, and then I'll run you some through the best practices for managing these imported files, including how you organize them and how you can put them effectively into your main robotics assemblies. And finally, I'll share some of my go-to websites for sourcing different robotics components. So first things first, what exactly is a step file? A step file, a .stp, .step uh, file, it's effectively a universal CAD file. You can kind of think of it like a PDF or a uh, .docx, except for 3D models. Now that's a little bit different from an STL, and STL is more like a 3D model for a 3D printer, if you're familiar with 3D printers but a step file is for the actual 3D model design section. And what a step file allows you to do is it allows different CAD programs to be able to manipulate and interact with that 3D model. Things like SolidWorks, Onshape, Fusion, Tinkercad, any of the bog standard CAD program will be able to accept a step file. Now, step files are really, really important when it comes to designing things for robotics because a lot of the time, the parts that you're going to be interacting with and a good portion of your robot is going to be a commercial off-the-shelf or a COTS part. And being able to accurately design and integrate these into your part is going to be critical to a functioning robot. For example, you may have some sort of coupler that has a specific spacing between where its mounting holes are. You need to find a specific attaching point for that. Having access to that real file is really going to help you out with knowing exactly where you should put your holes. Now for Fusion users and parametric design, that is the design history panel, keep in mind that most, if not all, step files will not capture the design history. It also won't capture any of those features that were used to create them. So things like mirroring or things like rectangular patterns, you're not going to be able to see and manipulate those if a step file is just brought in. You can think of step files as kind of like a dumb solid object that has multiple objects put together. It is a perfectly good place to start as a reference, and that does not mean that step files are useless for our purposes. So let's get into the actual practical side of how you go about importing a step file into Fusion. Now, there are two ways to do this, and one way is fast and one way is slow. Uh, I'm going to start showing you the slow way. So I can come on up to our little waffle menu here to be able to show our data panel. I'm, and make sure you are appropriately put these in, in a correct folder. For me, I've got a section here on FTC. And then I have a section on parts library. So I like to put these things in sections where it makes sense. You can come back and find these later. So I'm going to go inside Go Build it as a library. I can make a new folder called Kits because I'm going to be uploading a kit section of this today. And now, like I said, there's two ways to do this. Here's the slow way first. I'm going to select Upload. Then I, it's going to bring me to this menu here where I can select files from a computer. I can either drag and drop. Or for me, I already have a step file on my computer in my downloads. And oh, I need to extract this. So let's go ahead and extract this. Typically, when you download a zip file or a, a step file, it shows up in some sort of zip folder. So I'm going to make sure that I go ahead and extract that because you cannot bring in a non, uh, except, well, non extracted file. So I'll go ahead and open this. And this is a pretty large step file, it's 155 megabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and select upload. And now Fusion is going to do some backend processing. What it's going to do is it's going to upload it up into its cloud, uh, and it's going to take a really long time for this to actually upload properly. This is the slow way of going about this. Uh, reason being, I think we're already at about 10 or 15 seconds before this actually even is uploaded, and it's still about halfway. It's probably going to hang in about three quarters. The faster way is instead to come out to your file menu, select open. And I'm also going to open from my computer, and I'll select the exact same file. I want to click Open, accessing a local file of this. What it's going to do is rather than having to upload it up to Fusion's cloud servers first, it's instead going to open it, read it locally from my computer, 
And then it's going to, uh, once I save it, it will upload it up to Fusion's cloud service rather than uploading it first and then having to pull it back from his cloud service to be able to open it up. Uh, and I guarantee you that this is actually going to load faster here than it actually is the one that's uploaded. You can see that this one is still uploading. So while we wait for the slow version, let's take a look at this step file. And just keep in mind, there is no difference between selecting upload and then putting a step file in or selecting file open and then putting a step file in. It does the exact same thing on your computer, but one of them is far faster than the other. And I prefer that open from computer as opposed to that upload because it's still uploading. Now, one key thing to note here is you should always keep those step files that you uploaded as individual components. You should not directly put it into your robot design because that's really going to start slowing things down. You should always put in linked components. It's going to make things much faster, especially if they are things like an optical sensor or a distance sensor, what have you. You want those changes to propagate across all designs. So let's take a look at this design specifically from GoBuilda. This is a linear, I'm going to go ahead and close out this data panel. This is a linear actuator kit. And everything's just put into steel here. So if you want to get accurate weights, especially for a step file, you're going to have to make sure you go ahead and change all the materials uh, using that appearance tool. Because right now, everything is going to be steel and satin. Now, the first thing we want to do when we pull in a step file is we want to turn off capture design history. So I'm actually going to right-click on this point here. I'm going to say, do not capture design history. Reason being, if you notice down on our, on our, our timeline, there were 7 million piece imports. Uh, and as we make any changes to the step file, we actually don't want these things to be propagating into that design history because it's not really important at this moment. We want to optimize this file a little bit. When I'm pulling things in from GoBuilda and you start to have assemblies with a lot of parts, you're really going to start to bog down your machine. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and find any sort of hardware because hardware that have real threads on them, not just modeled threads, really slow down your machine. So you can actually go ahead and right click and delete any of those hardware provided that you know where you're actually going to be mounted these pieces with. This is my preference for doing it just because it really helps to speed up your designs as you're bringing in these step files. And for the most part, all of these hardware uh, is usually pretty well, pretty well organized. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete all of this hardware. It's just going to make things go a lot faster on our import. And that's already moving in the right track. So because this is one that I open rather than uploaded, I'm going to go ahead and save this file. I'm going to go ahead and call this one the linear actuator kit. Now with Fusion, I don't like using underscores like you would in Python for naming things because it's really going to mess with your search feature. Uh, make sure you save it to the correct place. We'll go ahead and save it. Now I bet you that the local, ah, there we go. We finally have that regular assembly that's actually managed to upload itself. So now that I've saved, you notice it's actually going to go ahead and upload itself up to the cloud. Now, keep in mind, if you are going to turn on the parametric model mode, it is going to slow things down a little bit because direct modeling tends to be a little bit faster. So if you're not going to make any changes to the design, it's likely a good idea to keep that off. Now, one thing you may find useful to do inside of your part here is to reorientate your object back to the origin point. Now, you notice that on Fusion, our part is actually kind of floating away from that linear origin point. This is a good time to go ahead and move your component so that it's closer to your actual origin point. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything, select M on my keyboard to move it, and I'm going to move my object closer to my origin point here. I'm also going to go ahead and rotate it up, because for the most part, my linear actuator is almost always going to be vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and move this around so that it gets us closer to my origin point. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and move that up like so, and just get it pretty close to where my origin point would be. Let's say we will go ahead and move five. Let's do negative five, uh, negative three. And we'll do the same thing over here. We'll go ahead and move five, maybe six. We'll go ahead and change to look at our z-axis, make sure that we are somewhat close here. Move it 10, and now that's about centered with our object. We do this. Because when we go to import this into other designs, it's going to make it a lot easier so that it imports everything in our, that origin section. Now, before we go ahead and move this into another design, it's a good point now that we've gone ahead and constrained that origin point to decide which point is going to be grounded. Uh, for me, it's going to be this main kind of section bar here. This is our main ground. 
So I'm going to right-click this one. I'm going to ground this to parent. It means whenever this piece moves, everything else is going to move along with it. And now I'm free to go ahead and add in all of my joints. Now, this is part of the reason why I went ahead and removed all of those individual hardware pieces, because otherwise I'm going to be started adding a lot of joints in at this point, and I don't want to have to be adding all those in. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and right-click, and we're going to capture design history again. This will allow us to put in as-built joints. And as-built joints are really important here because, for the most part, as these parts are built and assembled together, this is how we're going to go ahead and throw them. So I'm going to go ahead and select Assemble. I'm going to say As-built joint. So what I can do is I can select one component, select another component, and these two are rigid. They're never going to separate from one another. I'm going to go ahead and do another As-built joint or Shift-J. I can select my first component and my second component so that those two never move. And then I'm going to shift J. I'm going to move this component here to my main component. So as I add these joints in, they show up under the relationship tab. And I can go ahead and just keep adding these joints in as I go down. I can go ahead and add in my Revolute joints. And what that allows it to do is it allows me so that when I move this whole piece around, it stays together. But if you're never going to be editing any of these things, what you could do is you could technically select the entire thing. And you could say make it a rigid group. And now the entire component will be constrained. You're never going to be able to move any of those. Well, not never, but you won't be able to move any of those pieces apart from one another. So if you really just wanted to throw something in and slap it around, uh, making the entire component a rigid joint is really going to help. What that stopped you from doing is when you go to bring this into another design, you go to move some individual component inside that piece. It's going to start from being able to separate it from the entire design. Last thing we're going to do is just to check to make sure that everything looks like it did import appropriately. Sometimes step files do have some things that are non uh, that didn't import correctly. Some geometries are a little bit messed up. It again, it depends on who it is that actually designed that step file for you. Now, once you've got your part in, like that linear astro kit, I've got a base uh, mechanism wheel chassis here for a robot. And this is where I'm going to want to uh, import or link my design into. Uh, this really helps speed up assemblies in Fusion. If you are going to be direct modeling each individual piece in, you really start to bog things down. So what I can do is I can actually right-click on the Selenium Actuator Kit, select Insert into Current Design, and what it does is it inserts a link into my section. So then I can go ahead and manipulate this as I so choose and move it and put it in a place where I'm thinking I'm roughly going to be placing it inside of mine. Now this is just going to be super rough for now, and I think I might go ahead and just place it close enough in this kind of axis point like so. And yeah, that's exactly how I'm going to end up mounting that for now. I'll go ahead and select OK. Now I've got my design put in. Now you notice that there's this little link, kind of like a hyperlink section. And that means that if I were to pull that part or make any changes to that part, it's going to propagate over to this design here, uh, which is super helpful. The other thing to know about this link thing is that it technically has this part here in read-only mode. So it means it's not directly editable, and that's really helpful because again, when we start having so many parts inside of these large assemblies, especially when we're making a robot, it can really start to slow things down. So having it in a read-only mode is really useful. So now that we're done working and moving around with step files inside of Fusion, let's talk about some common places where you may want to grab some step files from. A really common uh, robotic supplier is GoBuilda. And any part on top of GoBuilda, if I were to scroll down through the page, I can find the individual step file that allowed me to download for entire kits or individual pieces. Rev Robotics is another comb supplier on any individual part. Again, you can scroll down and you can find the CAD for their step file specifically. Uh, Andy Mark also has individual files for everything. So for instance, I can grab samples and clips from a specific game piece here. Oops. I can grab them in the specific CAD file here. If you're a part of Vex Robotics, you can also go into individual components. And for the most part, they'll also have CAD files inside here that you can download as step files. Some common parts suppliers are McMaster Car. McMaster Car, when you go into individual parts, you can also go ahead and grab individual CAD files. You can grab solid file, uh, SolidWorks files specifically, or you can grab step and step with no threads. Again, if you really need those threads modeled in, go ahead and use them. But for the most part, threads, if you're not physically going to be using them inside of your part, it really just does slow down performance. So having no threads will still give you those exact geometries that you need rather than slowing things down. For the most part, 3D step is most of what it is you're going to need. There's also the GrabCAD 
Dot.com slash library is a great way for you to be able to find individual parts. You are going to have to make an account to be able to download it. And these ones are kind of user generated. So keep in mind, some things will work better than what it is you're looking for. But you can also go ahead and download any sort of uh, step files or STLs that individual people have uploaded. Sometimes on printables.com or on Thingiverse or on Maker World, you will be able to find individual users have put on step files for these things as well. So inside your files here, I have personally included all of my step files here. Not everybody has, but it's another way that you can go ahead and find step files for your robotics projects. So a quick recap, there's two ways you can upload things and files into uh, Fusion. You can go and select upload, put it in that way, or my preferred preference is to file, open, go ahead and open that step file. Once you've opened it in, turn off that parametric design history, delete any sort of hardware you might need, Go ahead and rename or label any bodies so that they're a little bit more clear for you. Go ahead and and change in that appearances so you can make sure the things are the correct parts and things like that. Again, it's really going to matter on how intense you're going to be using your CAD file as well as what your purposes are. Then go ahead and add in your joints as well. I like to use the as-built joints if things are going to be rigid groups because you don't need to move things around or go ahead and change them because for the most part, step files are generally designed as how you need. Or if you're just going to be slab and dashing this in, select your main top level component and then just make the entire thing a rigid group. And then you don't have to worry about farting around with things moving around and and shifting and so on. And then, of course, being able to find uh, reliable step files is a great place to start and any of these suppliers that I showed you up above with the subset of, you know, printables and GrabCAD some designers are better than others uh, and you'll be able to make useful kits to work out with Uh, starting from a good commercial off-the-shelf part can really help your robot come a lot a lot faster and getting comfortable with these techniques of working with uh, commercial off-the-shelf parts and different other users step files can really help bring your robotics uh, cad projects to that next level if you found some value in these kind of content these kind of tutorials Consider giving this video a like and consider subscribing for more tutorials on robotics, uh, design, and technology. And best of luck on your next robotics project.